Hi, this is Ibrahim. So, in the previous video, we talked a little about Bokeh, the library, the visualization library in Python. Uh, we saw a couple examples, and in this video, we're going to see more features of Bokeh that will be quite handy in the future. So, let's dive right in. So, this is the code that we've seen in the previous video. And a quick recap this is a class figure that will uh, create that will basically be an object where we plot the graph in. Something like an area where we will be plotting our drawings in, inside of. Uh, the output file as well as show, these are methods that uh, sequen uh, well, this output file method will actually create the file for us and show will display the drawing for us in the browser. Um, these are random numbers, so let's change the random numbers to something else. Let's create uh, a new set of numbers x for x in range, say for example, a range of 20. Uh, this would be a list, and let's change this one to be another list. Say y for y in range. Let's make this a little, say something like 23. Now, if we plot this, it's going to be a longer got displayed in another screen, so I'm going to pull it here. So this is the drawing that we just created. Yeah, we still have these fancy tools on the right hand side. Um, what we could do here is that instead of us drawing the axis, we can draw um, a line along the axis, uh, the axis, the axis, and the drawing, something like uh, that crosses the axis. So the way we do that is simply doing using the method line and supplying in the parameters x and y points uh, let's see how this one would look like so we will have the two plots side by not side by side one on top of the other because it's using the same set of points so if we change the set of points say for example uh, if we instead of uh, using the same x and y we can use another set of points say for example um, let's create x2 and y2 something like this and instead of the range 20 what we can do let's say create a range of 3 and this one be the range of 4 and if we draw the line again it would be a smaller line and uh, a different set of uh, oh yeah I made a mistake here I'll just make a quick correction and I'm going to supply in x2 and y2 so if we run this again, so the way we are going to see this being drawn as a small line here which represents the smaller set of numbers that we just specified and the longer set of numbers being uh, plotted to the X. So uh, that's all good, that's all fancy. Uh, what if we try to do more things to this? Uh, let's try to remove this. I just oh sorry. Uh, let me try to remove these two set of points. I want to I want the line to cross the other points as well. So the same set of number, same set of points will be used on both here. And what we can do, sorry, what we can do to this is that we can specify a width. One of the properties of the line is that we could do something like line underscore width, something like this underscore width, and then we could specify the width. Say, for example, let's make it four, something quite thick. And for the axis, we can actually do more things, more fascinating things, like uh, size here matters as well. So, for example, size of 5. So, and we can see that the uh, plot is much larger than it was. And you can see the previous one here, and you can see the difference. Uh, one other thing we could do is that we could actually change the color of this. Uh, let me change this to circles. Let me change this to circle. And notice here the order of uh, my representation. See here I started off with a line. Uh, sorry, I started off with a circle. And then I draw the line on top of it. So this one will be over the drawings of the circles. Um, let me specify a fill color here. And we can specify literal namings, or we can, uh, in forms of string, or we can even do uh, hex uh, representations of the color. Uh, we can go like red here. And then when we run this, uh, you will see that the line is over the, the circles. And you can see there is a small reddish here. Now, the reason, again, as I explained earlier, the reason this is because we've drawn the circle and then the line. 
but if we change the order here we will see that the circles are actually on top of the line and we can do a quick comparison here and then you can see the difference here so the order here really matters now another thing we could do is that instead of us displaying all these features here we can just choose to display we can just choose to display all of them or we can choose to display something else now let's see if we or let's see um yeah okay so let's okay so let's display something else so let's display something like a selection tool that if we select this area here the others won't show now that's again it's very simple thanks to the library things are quite 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 simple okay so the way uh, we do that is that uh, if we want to allow selection we specify tools and in it uh, a tools parameter and in it we supply what we really need so we want to create sort of a box selection it's called select this will be clear when we see when it is placed on the graph and then we want to enable the lasso select uh, now this would actually um, let's display this and then you will see that the other tools have actually disappeared the zoom tool and stuff so you have to specify them on your own afterwards so now we've enabled the box select if we click on this we will be creating sort of a box that selects the points we need something like this so the others have got this the others disappeared and then if we drew use the lasso select we could actually draw more things like something like this and then only the one that's been selected gets drawn then we can do the same here the same here and so on and so forth so yeah basically that's it i hope that was very simple and i'm trying to make my videos a little shorter than before if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comment section below and thank you for watching have a good day